my name's um, David Smith of the Guardian newspaper in the UK. Um, what, what do you think of the um, economic freedom fighters? Um, are they significant in at least sort of representing a, a strand of thought, and, and could they pull the, uh, the ANC to the left in some way? I think we don't know what the EFF is yet. We don't, I haven't seen an analysis yet of who voted for them. What percentage in the middle class, so-called, so what is this phenomenon? We can see in Parliament there are quite a few middle class people there. Now, exactly what they stand for is also a bit murky to me. Um, so, I am puzzled by the EFF. I think it's a very new phenomenon. Um, leaders, you know, up for fraud charges or sort of, so this is, I think the media fell in love here. They fell in love with the drama and the spectacle and there were some very misleading things. And we were told, for instance, they had a, uh, an event of 50,000 people in Timbi, so when there is no stadium that can hold that number of people. So I think the media has not been helpful in this respect or sort of, that's another topic. So I don't know what to make of this. I don't know when you get over the spectacle, They've made things more lively, okay? So on the one hand, what do they represent? Well, there's certainly some disaffection from the ANC and anger. But what kind it takes, what form it takes, I don't know. I don't know how many of the people involved in the so-called local government unrest around the country, how many voted EFF. We don't have the data. How many... You know, they did well in Soweto. How many, what was that sort of an... I think they... I don't know. Some people say that this was the biggest way to kind of tell the ANC what you think of them, kind of, um, even though you disagree with what they say. So I think there was a protest vote there, and we don't know. So I think we have too little data. You can sort of pontificate as much as you like. Now, can they last is a question. I mean, we've seen other breakaways who've fallen apart. Thus far, they sort of seem to be fairly coherent. But around what? A breakling watch for every citizen? I don't know. Um, so what is their policy? It's a sort of hypocrisy in economic policy. So we could get quite tough, but nobody's doing that yet. So I think they're a puzzling phenomenon at the moment. On the other hand, in South Africa's racial politics... It's good for the country, it seems to me, to have a black person go to Nkandla and say the emperor has no clothes. That's different from a white politician doing that. What its legs are, I don't know. So I think this we don't know enough, and it's not clear yet, and we don't have enough data. Um, on the EFF, you know, I, I do think we, we, we don't have enough data yet. I am intrigued by just conversations and, and what you see uh, in terms of black middle class professionals um, who voted EFF, for instance, um, and what that says about the need for alternatives and where people are in terms of thinking about their own prospects and what they would like to see in the country. And I think for a lot of the rising middle class, there is that dichotomy between having attained some success, um, perhaps being allied, aligned to ANC DA type policies, as in many ways, logical ways to extend um, that privilege, but also I think having a side uh, to them that understands where they're coming from, understands um, those who have, who have um, who are still being excluded, and seem to think that the kinds of ideas that the EFF presents would rise, um, you know, everyone up. What, what is also interesting though about the EFF is their manifesto which I found very plain vanilla in terms of old leftist ideas um, that mostly have been credited that no one really says with conviction anymore. But they managed to dress that up um, to electoral, some electoral success. So I think they, they do you know, pretend interesting uh, contradictions. And yeah, once again, I think we'll see if they, they last.